When I was talking about good health, I thought, well, what is good health? It's the absence of bad stuff. It means you're not overweight. You don't have high blood pressure. You don't have high levels of triglycerides in your blood. The level of HDL, the good protective LDL, is high, or it ought to be high. And uh, you don't have elevated blood sugar levels. So in essence, this is good health is the absence of what we call metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome to a doctor has five features. If you have three of those five, I will diagnose you with metabolic syndrome. That includes if you have weight around your abdomen, if your fasting glucose is over 5.6, if your blood pressure is over 135 and 85, if your triglycerides are over 1.5, if your HDL is less than one, if you tick three of those boxes, you have metabolic syndrome. Now, the interesting thing is that each one of those problems is caused by resistance to insulin. Everyone. And you'll notice that LDL doesn't form part of that definition. It's because we know just looking at LDL level per se is not that good. So we're going to take a bit of a tour and have a look at each of those five features and have a look at how insulin parlays into those. This is a DEXA scan of one of my patients. And what you can note is that there's this yellow here. This is fat. This is a pattern of abdominal obesity. This is the bad stuff. This is the stuff that's associated with risk of heart disease. And we also know very clearly that as your level of insulin goes up, there's a strong correlation with increased body weight. So insulin is implicated in obesity. So how does it actually cause obesity? So we know that it does make the fat cells bigger. So if you want to make that fat cell bigger, you have to stuff more in. And the things that you want to put in, if, we, if that was the goal, would be a triglyceride here and glucose. Because when the glucose and fatty acids from the triglycerides are inside the cell, they combine to form the storage form of fat, which is called a triglyceride. Now, this triglyceride molecule is too big to diffuse across the cell membrane. It's not going anywhere. So for it to be made small enough so that the fatty acids can cross over this membrane here, we need to cleave it. And that's where something called lipoprotein lipase comes into its own. And it's no coincidence that you give a little bit of insulin and the activity of this enzyme here increases substantially. Insulin also acts on this transporter here, what we call the GLUT4 transporter. This is like a gate that glucose uses to get into the fat cell. If you have an increase in your insulin level, it opens the gate. Glucose goes in, and the end result is that you've now stored fat and the fat cell is bigger.